Hi friends, welcome to my technical series of coding. Uh, in today's session, I'll be explaining about the phosphating, the different types of phosphating. And I'll be explaining in detail about each type of phosphating. Now let me go into this lecture directly. Phosphating, see, is a kind of a metal pretreatment uh, given on any metal components so that we can have a very good film built of paint as well as it improves the adhesion of the paint so that the overall paint performance will be better especially the corrosion resistance water resistance etc and this kind of uh, metal pretreatment is uh, interpreted in terms of phosphate coating after all that is we are giving a layer we are cleaning first with uh, some suitable solvent or alkaline degreaser and make sure that it should be totally free from any dust oil grease etc so that it should be like a virgin metal it should be very very raw it means what that is totally free from the metal surface should be totally free from rust dust in any form okay so make the surface perfect I will be talking about the cleaning of uh, various metals in the uh, subsequent uh, videos. But before that, I just wanted to tell that the uh, that is a good metal treatment can be achieved only by better metal cleaning. That is very important. Now let us go for this phosphate layer co or phosphate coating. See, this phosphate coating, phosphate, let me explain about this phosphate first of all. That is... PO43 minus. This is called phosphate anion. Phosphate anion. PO43 minus. Phosphate anion. It is the uh, trivalent anion. And we have got various types of phosphate like uh, calcium phosphate that is very popular. Then uh, sodium phosphate, potassium phosphate, zinc phosphate, iron phosphate, etc. Okay. But we are uh, very, very uh, focusing on the three types of phosphate that is iron phosphating zinc phosphating then manganese phosphating and in fact uh, in those days they had lead phosphating but because of uh, uh, environmental problem issues we have totally banned this so there is no scope for lead phosphate so let us forget about it let us focus on iron phosphating zinc phosphating manganese phosphating okay right in um, iron phosphating, for instance, the tentative coating weight will be almost uh, uh, 30 to 100 uh, gram, I mean 30 to 100 milligram per square foot. Okay, 30 to 100. Even it may vary, uh, that is uh, 300 to 1000 also. It depends on the type of coating. Then zinc, zinc has light weight medium weight and heavy coating weight formulations so there are three types of zinc phosphate coating and manganese phosphate coating here it is a heavy one heavy coating uh, it is exclusively meant for that is oiling and greasing so it is not entitled for any painting okay so for it acts as a very good lubricant and that is why it, it forms a very rough surface porous surface of manganese phosphate so manganese that is a thousand to three thousand milligram per square feet. Okay. Zinc phosphating. So it has got light, medium, and heavy types. Light has hundred to four hundred milligram per square foot. Light has hundred to milligram per square foot. That means so that is a for one square foot, it can deposit hundred to four hundred milligram. Okay. And similarly, medium. Medium is 450 milligram to 1000 milligram per square foot. It means that is we can coat, uh, that is a zinc phosphate of uh, coating weight actually. It is interpreted in terms of weight only. So, 450 to 1000 milligram per square foot. Next, heavy. So, heavy is intended uh, generally for uh, even uh, greasing and uh, that is a waxing so here or tubing also so heavy thousand to three thousand milligram per square foot 
So with the increase of coating weight, actually it's the uh, roughness, coating roughness will be more and there will be a lot of uh, porosity also. So if there is uh, more porosity, that is not good for corrosion resistance. So, uh, but at the same time, it can absorb the oil and waxes and for that purpose, uh, that is a heavy coating is recommended. And for uh, uh, corrosion resistance, by uh, painting, either by liquid paint or powder painting, you can go for that is uh, uh, light to medium. Okay, right. And now let us uh, focus on iron phosphating. Iron phosphating actually is very, very thin coating. Okay, so it is amorphous. Amorphous means that is non crystalline, it is not crystalline. Right. And uh, it is uh, almost virtually it is invisible. You cannot find uh, so clearly the coating formation. Even though the color may be uh, uniform, iridescent blue, you used to say, we used to say, or bluish gray. And then the coating weight ranges from 30 to 100 milligram per square foot. So normally in terms of gram means a 0.3 to 1 gram per square meter. Okay. Uh, then paint addition is improved with the help of this iron phosphate coating so what you do is if you have got any component and let me consider this component so we have got the component here okay so first you have to clean it properly and after ensuring oil free dust free rust free surface okay then you can give a coating of iron phosphating so if it is mildly coated then you can give uh, in fact, that is the furniture enamels, so furniture paints are given on uh, that is a lightweight uh, iron phosphate coatings. Okay, so that is uh, recommended. But uh, if you insist for salt spray with the better uh, salt spray resistance, that is corrosion resistance with the better salt spray resistance, usually salt spray is the uh, testing parameter that is uh, useful for measuring the extent of corrosion resistance. Okay, so we used to give in terms of uh, salt spray hours, salt spray resistant hours. Uh, according to ASTM B117. So here, uh, that is uh, normally, uh, that is uh, for certain components, probably that is, they may insist for 100 or 200 hours, and in some cases, 400 hours, in some cases, 600 to 800 hours. In, ca in cases of, uh, in case of uh, tractors and other heavy weight equipments and uh, machineries and uh, uh, automobiles, they may even uh, go for 1000 hours of salt spray okay so based on the type and the nature of coating that is the corrosion resistance can be enhanced okay right now uh, the paint addition can be improved with the help of this iron phosphate under coat then uh, you can uh, uh, when i say paint addition addition of liquid paint as well as powder coating okay then uh, as I already mentioned, corrosion resistance. So it should be rust proof. That is, the rust should not be uh, developed after painting. You know, that is uh, uh, sometimes, uh, after all, that is a painting is done for maintenance purposes and a decorative purpose, aesthetic values there. At the same time, it should have some decorative purpose as well as the uh, protective purpose. Okay, right. Then uh, substrate, the substrate generally for iron phosphating can be uh, mild steel okay then uniform blue to bluish gray color is obtained by this kind of iron phosphating okay right then uh, when you have to uh, that is uh, uh, treat these uh, components you can have stainless steel bath where you can uh, dip and uh, uh, spray phosphating formulations are also available in case of uh, immersion that is uh, you have to uh, you should have some good stainless steel bath and then spray or dip as i already told you the method of applications can be spray or dip okay hi friends welcome to my technical session uh, in this uh, session i'll be explaining about manganese phosphating so in the previous lectures i've been already talking about I mean uh, iron phosphating, zinc phosphating and the introduction about the phosphating. So please go through previous videos and in continuation of those videos I am proceeding with this uh, lecture on manganese phosphating. 
manganese phosphating. So actually that is the manganese is represented by Mn and it's a phosphate that is a PO4 3 minus and it's value I mean in fact the specialty of manganese is its variable valency from manganese plus 2 to plus 7. For example in the case of potassium permanganate KMnO4 its valency is plus 7 okay and uh, here uh, there is a manganese sulfate that is Mn2SO4 Mn this is thrice okay so Mn3 SO4 thrice but uh, you cannot uh, expect uh, such straight formula for manganese phosphate coating it would be a combination of uh, that is a hydrophosphate, hypophosphate, phosphate, manganese phosphate, ion phosphate so it is a complex type of a crystals okay you cannot directly expect the pure manganese phosphate okay right but the major content is manganese and it is a heavy phosphate and uh, in fact its coating weight is 1000 milligram to 3000 milligram per square feet suppose if you consider a component of one square foot surface and it will form that is a porous surface okay and it will be coarser also the crystal uh, structures will be coarser so likewise the weight will be that is 1000 milligram to 3000 milligram per square foot and uh, they are larger crystals okay and as i already suggested that is they form very thick coating so this is not suitable for painting so you must understand that one but probably there is it may be useful for greasing oiling and it will be useful uh, mainly applied on uh, vehicles like uh, a aircraft a helicopter components heavy automatic gears steering pods etc okay then suppose if you want to reduce the particle size what you can do is you can introduce uh, that is surface conditioner prior to phosphate path okay and then um, you have got uh, that is it will withstand very good uh, temperature high temperatures also then the color will be dark gray or black it is uh, sometimes semi decorative only but you cannot leave it you can leave this as such by oiling okay and then uh, as i already suggested no coating is recommended but oiling can be done oiling greasing etc then uh, immersion type this is of immersion type okay and uh, as i already suggested this is of heavy duty nature okay so it's a heavy coating type hi friends how are you uh, in today's uh, session i'll be explaining about zinc phosphate this is one of the most frequently used metal pretreatment by many metal finishing industries zinc phosphate uh, you know the formula of zinc zn and the phosphate po4 3 minus so you can combine this and this is zinc 2 plus but as you expected it will not contain only zinc phosphate along with that you will be having iron phosphate also but this iron phosphate it when it becomes a ferric phosphate that is uh, uh, thrown out as the sludge so it is the a combination of phosphates and major you have got the zinc ion and phosphate ion okay and here uh, we have three types of uh, zinc phosphate one is light weight zinc phosphate it is fine and crystalline in fact uh, in spray type we have got two types of application dip type and uh, spray type in spray type you will be able to get light weight fine crystalline phosphates phosphate crystals um, and uh, this can also be used for dipping Whereas, based on the coating weight, they are classified into lightweight, medium weight, heavy weight. Lightweight means the coating weight per square feet is 100 milligram to 450 milligram. Whereas, it can be, it can be interpreted in terms of gram per square meter also. What you have to do is just divide by 10. 
so that 1 gram to 4.5 gram per square meter and then medium weight 450 milligram to 1000 milligram per square feet so here somewhat heavier than the uh, light weight of course it is a medium so 450 milligram to 1000 milligram per square feet and in terms of gram 4.5 gram to 10 gram per square meter when you take one square meter component it will coat 4.5 gram to 10 gram okay so this is known as a medium weight and these two are applicable for coating industries where uh, after treatment of phosphating they will give the top coat the finish coat uh, with liquid paint or powder coat and the third variety is heavy weight so here 1000 milligram to 3000 milligram per square feet that is 10 gram to 30 gram per square meter square meter okay so here it will be slightly porous and it may not have aesthetic appearance and it will have a dead matte i mean matte finish also so if you want to have a super glossy finish with a single coat of uh, finish or double coat of finish then i would suggest you go for light weight where you cannot get the highest uh, corrosion resistance there will be moderate corrosion resistance in terms of salt spray hours resistance hours but when you go for medium weight this is always ideal for any automotive industries and this is somewhat a super weight nature okay so with the increase of coating weight you can have better corrosion resistance but it will sometimes uh, complicate also so heavier the coating it will be it will have the hygroscopic tendency so that the water test may go i mean uh, may be a failure okay so take care i would always suggest to go for the medium weight now single apart from that we can have a single pack phosphating system or dual pack with the accelerator okay so in my opinion always go for dual pack with the accelerator okay of course heat energy is required around 50 to 55 to 70 degrees centigrade but that is the ideal phosphating but as far as the cold process is concerned it will take it will take a longer duration okay and not only that it is not so efficient as that of dual pack also and the better crystal test pattern can be achieved only by 55 to 70 degrees centigrade by using appropriate accelerators accelerators are nothing but oxidizing agents like nitrate nitrite chlorate nitroguanidine etc okay so uh, in single pack uh, it can be done at room temperature itself but in a dual pack you have to maintain the temperature and i'll be talking about the heating element and what are the expected problems while processing the uh, phosphate so that it should be useful in the uh, shopping floor level shopping floor level then i need to talk about the uh, calcium modified zinc phosphate also so here it will incorporate some the formulator will incorporate some calcium salts so that it will it will be finer the coating will be finer very smooth and uh, uh, it has less sludge also so the major problem with uh, uh, phosphating is the sludge so nowadays uh, that is a nano coating has been developed based on uh, zirconic acids so i will talk about that uh, uh, zirconia coatings also so this is the latest uh, nano coating technology so that uh, you, it will be uh, eco-friendly and economical also and not only that the maintenance of bath will be very easier and you won't get any sludge and not only that uh, that is uh, it will have the finest coating okay and it will be ideal for uh, liquid painting as well as powder coating okay and there are a lot of uh, inquiries for nano coating also so if you are interested you can uh, uh, that is get your i mean uh, send your inquiries okay right uh, so in the next session i'll be explaining about how to maintain a bath okay so this is very very important and uh, how to construct a bath and uh, if there is any problem in the process what are all the important parameters you have to look into that 
okay and what are the parameters to be maintained all these details will be given in my next video okay so thank you for watching this video